Good day YouTube, Jacob Spong here from Artworks of Scanhead and today we're going to talk about the real Samurais from Samurai X and Boronic Kimchi. Let's go! Many of us love Samurai movies and animes like The Last Samurai, Ronin, Bleach, Samurai X, and the Roroni Kinshin movies. But among all the Samurai movies and animes, we watch the story of Kinshin Himura of Samurai X and of Roroni Kinshin is somewhat more informative and realistic. I think that's because they really put Japan's culture and history to it. The writer of Samurai X inspired the character's background from real Samurais wow, during Japan's turbulent era the Tokugawa era and also the uh, Meiji Revolution. Let's start with the time the story of Samurai X took place. It happened during the early stage of Meiji era. That's where the story circulated, right? That's right. The Meiji period was the time Japan transitioned to become a modern state, making the emperor as the supreme leader again and abandoning the shogunate rule. At this period, Japan was unified. The period brought about the modernization and westernization of the country. Pretty amazing. In other words, the Meiji era was a bit peaceful period in Japan's history. So to spice up an action in the series, they put legendary characters from the old turbulent period, the Tokugawa era, that's right, to play around on the Meiji revolution. That, uh, that, that period was the period of summer duels, assassins, ninjas, and battles, that's right. This was the period where great swordsmen were recorded for their abilities and strengths. and the character of Kinchin was molded from that period. That is why the story of Samurai X is filled with so many antagonists from Tokugawa era with great skills. Well then, now I'll attack with the true Gatotsu. No more holding back. What is interesting in Samurai X is we also see a transition of a master swordsman from being a dreaded assassin to a worthy citizen of the new era. So this is where we can identify real samurais that inspired the character of Kenshin Himura. <laughs> Kenshin was a master swordsman and assassin. His move is somewhat unique and acrobatic for a standard samurai. So where did they get the inspiration? The writer got his inspiration from a known master, Matsubayashi Hinyasai. Matsubayashi taught samurai in a ninja style. No wonder Kinshin has an amazing ability during his assassin days. You know what I'm thinking? Yes, he was like a ninja. He jumps, moves fast, skips battles easily, and the way he handles his sword is pretty much amazing. Matsubayashi's discipline is called Ganritsu Ryo, and there's a lot about Shuriken involved in that technique. But let's not get involved to that. Kenshin's life as an assassin was inspired by a famous assassin during the Tokugawa era. His name was Kawakami Ginsai. He was one of the four notable assassins of the Bakumatsu period. That's the final years of the shogunate. His high-speed sword in attacking his target enabled him to do assassination jobs even at daytime. This is where they get the inspiration about Kenshin's badass background. But with regards to Kenshin's profile during the Samurai X series and the Roni Kenshin films, there's another true samurai for that. Because Gensai's life was different from Kenshin's. In his final years, Gensai was imprisoned and later executed by the Meiji government. So the author could have only used Gensai for the assassin part on Kenshin Himura's profile. But with regards to Kenshin's personality and profile in most of the series, the author did not talk much about it. But if you look at the profile of Kenshin, being the undefeated swordsman and as a wanderer, there is no other samurai that we can connect to him other than Miyamoto Musashi.
Here is something amazing about their connection. Moshashi started his samurai exploits during the start of the Tokugawa era, while Kenshin was during the end of the Tokugawa era. Moshashi was trained by his dad at an early age, probably at 5 to 7 years old, because traditionally that's how samurai fathers in Japan started training their kids. His mother was killed and his father abandoned him, I think, uh, at the age of 10 or 11. In other words, he had no parents. Kinshin lost his parents from the bandit attack and was abducted by a father-like samurai and was trained at the age of 6 to 7 years old, just like Musashi. Musashi's father, Shinmen Monisai, was a master samurai and at the same time, a very strict and harsh father too. He demanded excellence from his boy, just like the way young Shinta was trained under the wings of Hiko Sijuro, right? Hiko Sijiro trained Shinta in a strict and harsh method to unleash the warrior spirit of Shinta because that's how Moshashi's father trained him also. Moshashi's warrior mentality was unleashed from the brutal training of his dad, same as Shinta. Here is something cool. Moshashi's first duel was named Sijuro. Now you know where they got the name Kenshin's master, Hiko Sijuro. Quite amazing. Though Kenshin's skills are way different to Musashi, Musashi created and refined a two-sword Kenjutsu technique. While Kenshin was an expert on just one sword, but Kenshin is equally adept in dual sword combat, using his ship as a secondary weapon. The reputation of Kenshin defeating his foes in a single blow is not new also. Because Musashi, during Musashi's exploits, had defeated duels in a single blow. And of course, it shocked so many spectators at that time. There are a lot of things going on on Kenshin's journey that is so similar to Musashi's, and we're going to talk about it. Musashi was the top most undefeated samurai in the history of Japan, and he survived 60 battles to the death during the Tokugawa period. On the other hand, Kenshin survived so many battles, duels during the Meiji era. But in some episodes, of course, I think you know that, well, we saw him uh, lost to a battle. Well, that's the beauty of entertainment. You need the character to experience defeat sometimes in order to draw emotions from the viewers. If Kenshin was a real samurai, he could be a, as good as Musashi. Musashi was recognized as the best swordsman in Tokugawa period, while Kenshin was recognized as the master swordsman during the Meiji era. Of course, in the movie and in the anime. Now let's start talking about the early duels of Musashi. Musashi had his first duels at the age of 13 to 16. Kenshin was doing his assassin missions during those ages and fought skillful samurais. Musashi became a wanderer in his 20s, so as Kenshin. Actually, the series Samurai X happened in Kenshin's young adult years. Yeah, that's where we can connect the two. Miyamoto Musashi spent many years dueling with Japan's best swordsmen and warriors in an endless pursuit toward perfection, while Kenshin wandered the country to protect every individual from danger without harming others through pacifist means. Hmm, something different here. It is so obvious that the writer did not copy Musashi's philosophy in life because in Samurai X and in Roni Kinchen, as Kinchen gets older, he became a philanthropist instead of a warrior who wanted to be the best of the best, just like Musashi. Well, I think that's for the sake of the story, my friend. They both served their countries and they became also good citizens during their final days. And they both died by their illness. Kinchen died at the age of 48 while Musashi died at the age of 61. Now, given a chance that Kinshin is a real samurai and challenged Musashi for a duel, who do you think would win? Well, if you have something in mind, you can write down on our comments below. Of course, we will explain that and we'll answer that on our next episode. This is Jake Esmo and thank you very much for watching.